Do you ever feel like you're working your ass off but not seeing the results you want to see? Like there's always a ridiculous amount of stuff to do but never enough time in the day to actually do it? Or do you sometimes feel completely lost? Like you don't even know what you're working towards anymore. That is exactly how we felt until we picked up the book Essentialism by Greg McCown. After reading it, we realized the problem wasn't that we weren't doing enough. It was actually that we were trying to do too much. So in this episode of Brillosophy, we'll be sharing our number one lesson from the book and how we put it into practice to simplify our life and start doing much less, but achieving so much more. The great Stoic Emperor Marcus Aurelius once said, if you seek tranquility, do less. Do only what is essential, which brings a double satisfaction. To do less, better. Do less, better. Those last three words can literally sum up this entire 200 page book that we read. Such a powerful idea. But my question is, why do we suck at it? Why do we constantly spread ourselves too thin? Why do we constantly try to be great at everything and then end up being mediocre at so many things? Why is that? It reminds me of the analogy of the sun and the magnifying glass, right? So if the sun was trying to kill an ant on the ground, mm -hmm. the sun is this big ball of energy in the sky. And it has a lot of energy, but not nearly enough energy to burn an ant on the ground. But what happens when you focus that energy, when you harness it using a magnifying glass, right? We used to see these cartoons as a kid. The sun, the solar energy gets completely focused and creates a laser beam, a laser beam of focused energy that can then burn that ant. Mm. And that is exactly the perfect example of what this book teaches us. Yeah. If we focus our energy, if we focus it in a like very few areas, one, two, or three areas, we will be able to generate so much more momentum as opposed yeah. to trying to do it all. If we try to do it all, we'll be like the sun. Yeah, sure, you're shining on the, on the planet, but you're not, you're not getting that laser beam that you really need in order to see the results you want to see. That is why we're not, we haven't been seeing the results we want to see is because we have not been focused enough. Yeah, that, it reminds me of that powerful image that Greg uses in this book. It's so simple, but it's like stapled in our brains right now. And basically it's two circles drawn side by side next to each other. In the middle of each circle is the word energy. And on the circle on the left, there are about six to 10 little arrows coming out of it. And they're only going about an inch out. And the circle on the right only has one arrow coming out of it. And it's going... 10 times further than all the little circles that are coming out of the image on the left. So the much deeper thing that we're trying to say here is where focus goes, energy flows. Yep. And the more narrow you can focus, the more energy you can produce because it gets multiplied like that laser beam. Uh -huh. One of the best examples from this book that really brought this to life for me and really surprised me was about Warren Buffett. Mm. So I did not know this before, but Warren Buffett, this multi-billionaire, can attribute 90% of his wealth, 90%, so almost all of it, yeah. to just 10 investments, 10. 10 decisions created multi, multi-billions of dollars in net worth for this guy. And it's great that he taught us that in investing, but how do we as individuals actually apply it to our life to improve the quality of our lives, Mike? What do you think? Well, I could tell you what we did. <laughs> so we read this book and one of the things that we love doing is setting goals, right? We love to be goal-oriented people working towards the best version of ourselves. And after reading it, I looked at my list of goals and I was like, all right, there is way too many goals here. Like there is absolutely no way that I can actually accomplish all of these things. Uh -huh. So we started by chunking them and we really chunked them into three different buckets. We call it our big three. So we think the three buckets of a good life are health, wealth, and relationships. And if you can do well in each of those three buckets, you have a good happy, balanced life. Mm. So first we took all those goals and we chunked them into these three buckets. Then we looked at each one of those buckets and we said, okay, 
how can we eliminate <laughs> like almost all of these? And so we took a question from the book that is super, super powerful and applied it to these. We asked ourselves for each bucket, what is the one goal here that if we accomplished it would make all the other goals either easier or completely irrelevant? And asking ourselves that question was so powerful because it got us to realize that you don't really need all these fucking goals. You literally just need to figure out what is the one thing here that would make all of these like done. Yeah. Basically, you don't need all of them. Yeah. And so for the health goal, for example, we had all these different goals like um, I want to stick to this diet or I want to hit 10,000 steps a day or I want to get to the gym a certain amount of times. And it was just goal after goal after goal after goal. Then we realized, okay, what is the one thing that would make sure that all of these other things got done? Mm -hmm. And we realized that that was actually a weight goal. If we could hit a certain weight by a certain amount of time, it would mean that we were staying fit, we were getting to the gym. It would mean that we were staying healthy and eating the right foods. It would mean that we were staying active and hitting our 10,000 steps mm -hmm. a day. It was the ultimate result to head for yeah. so that we can completely simplify this bucket of life and only have one measurable result that we're working towards. Mm -hmm. It makes measuring progress super easy and rewarding and simple. I also think one thing that it does is our brains can only handle so much information, right? That's why phone numbers are only seven digits and they're broken up between three numbers first and then four numbers second is because our brains really can't remember much more than that. The big reason why we do this is exactly that. Because at any moment in time, if you catch me walking down the street and you say, Nick, what are your goals? And I can instantly tell you my big three goals, right? I don't have to go down a long list of all my goals and yep. try to remember. Them. No, I know what my big three are. It keeps me focused and aligned. So you talked about our health, right? We also said our other two categories are our wealth and our relationships. And let's talk about our wealth a little bit, because this is a challenging one for guys like us who are entrepreneurs and in this constant roller coaster, which is the world of entrepreneurship. So yeah. talk a little bit about how you think about the wealth category and the setting the goal and simplifying it. Yeah, this one was definitely the hardest to do because like you said, as an entrepreneur, you have to focus on a lot of different things. Um, but it was also the most rewarding once we took the time and did it. So to give people listening a little background on us, we have been running a nonprofit for the last eight years and recently decided that it was time for us to move in a different direction. So we moved the nonprofit work to part time and are doing that as volunteers and decided to take a new leap of faith into this brand new world of entrepreneurship of content creation. We loved creating content. We've always loved it. And we're in this stage in the beginning where we're trying to figure out what exactly we're trying to do. So when we made that decision, we started creating all different types of content on every single platform. We wanted to have a million subscribers on YouTube. We wanted to have a million podcast subscribers. We wanted to have a million news uh, letter subscribers on an email. We wanted to have a million Instagram followers and we started creating short form content and podcast episodes and all these different things. And after about a month of doing it and reading this book, we realized, okay, we need to settle down here <laughs> because sure, we're on all of these different platforms, but if you look at any of them individually, none of the content we're creating is very good. We're spreading ourselves way too thin. We are going a mile wide instead of a mile deep. So the quality of what we're producing is so much lower than it could be. So once again, we use that question from the book. What is the one platform mm -hmm. that if accomplished would make all the other platforms either easier or irrelevant? And we ultimately decided that that platform for us would be YouTube for a few different reasons. YouTube allows you to really have a playground where the other platforms don't. It allows you to have the long form content. It allows you to have a podcast. It allows you to experiment with short form content. And it also allows us to build the community that we really wanted to build where other platforms have some of those things, but not all of yeah. those things. So it really, really helped us to clarify this one go big goal for wealth, which was a million subscribers in three years, which is a really long time for us. Um, but just picking our platform, the one platform we were gonna go all in on, has completely changed our life because now 
we're laser focused, like that magnifying glass. We're looking up what do titles and thumbnails like really need to look like. We're getting into the science of just YouTube and mastering this one platform, mm -hmm. right? So we're not quite there yet. Like we haven't seen the results we want to see just yet, but just knowing that we're so focused on this one thing yeah. completely transforms our confidence level. Yeah, right? just having that clarity allows us to really feel the momentum building. Right. That's that's really what this is about, is that feeling that momentum building. Um, and the momentum doesn't build when you're trying to do too many different things because your energy is just split. Yeah. But when you put that energy in one thing, you can really start seeing that ball go down the hill a lot faster. And that's what we're starting to feel. And like you said, we have a long way to go. And by no means do we have it all figured out. But we do feel like that was a very um, applicable part of this book for us and something that we think is really going to transform our lives. And something that I think would help whoever's watching or listening right now, like it is so worth taking that step back to simplify this part of your life and figure out what is the one thing. Uh -huh. It's so, so powerful. So is there a caveat to these goals? Is there something that we're oversimplifying here? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, what is that? I think setting your big three are great, uh -huh. right? But goals without systems, if we've learned anything, it's that goals without systems are worthless. Uh -huh. You can set these big goals like the weight goal to hit this amount of weight. But if you don't put the right daily disciplines in place, if you don't measure the daily disciplines of getting to the gym, of hitting your 10,000 steps a day or sticking to a certain type of diet, if you're not sticking to the daily disciplines, you'll never reach that goal. Yeah. So the goal itself is not enough, right? You need to create the daily disciplines that will help you to achieve that big yeah. three goal. So the daily disciplines are super necessary, but that's not really what this episode is about. We'll maybe make a future episode about how to do the daily discipline type stuff, but setting the big three are still extremely helpful to just get the direction right. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a good starting place mm -hmm. and a simple starting place to get the direction right of where you're headed. Because when you know where you're going, you feel so much more alive, so much more motivated, so much more clear, like clarity is power. Yeah. And so yes, the next step after you set the big three are the daily habits, but setting the big three yeah. is a super powerful first step. And along those lines, a big part of happiness is feeling like you're making progress. Yeah. And by having these simple big three goals, you can really feel the progress and feel that happiness that we're all trying to feel. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I think it's time to wrap this up. Yeah. But before we do, we always say ideas without execution are just a complete waste of time. <laughs> and this episode would be a complete waste of time if we don't take action on anything that we've talked about. So we have a challenge for whoever is listening or watching right now. And that challenge is Pick one of these three areas, either health, wealth, or relationships, and look at your goals in that area or set some goals in that area if you don't have any right now, and then ask yourself that question. What one result in this area do I want to achieve that will make all the other goals that I have in this bucket of life much easier or completely irrelevant? What is your one big goal for the one area of your life that is most important to you right now. Taking that first step will give you the momentum you need to start making the other three, but just pick one for now. And the challenge is write it in the comments so that you can actually hold yourself accountable. Don't just listen or watch this episode and then go to the next thing and do absolutely nothing about it. Take some time, even five, 10 seconds to write that down in the comments. We wanna see it and we want you to hold yourself accountable. So that's our challenge and our call to action. There you go, Professor Mike <laughs> with his glasses. He's uh he's putting uh, he's giving us some homework. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for those listening, I'm wearing glasses today because uh, I'm getting migraines, so I have blue light glasses and I look like I'm um, giving a lecture at yeah. Harvard right now. <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Love you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. And I'll uh, see you next time. Great job, bro. Peace. Peace.